I think from my own point of view, and I think um, I actually spoke to one of my mates about this as well, um, with obviously being in our early 20s at the start of the vaccine rollout, there was perhaps a kind of perception that maybe, you know, by the time it gets to us, there'll be enough people vaccinated already that we won't need it. And uh, me being me, I, I'm, I'm really, I don't like needles and I don't like... Um, yeah, uh, vaccines kind of terrify me a bit. So I was, to be honest with you, I was kind of hoping that it didn't it didn't reach me and, you know, it'd be okay by then. Um, so yeah, I was really apprehensive about getting the, the vaccine, but there's absolutely nothing to worry about at all because it was, um, even for a big sort of wuss like me, it was nothing at all. And the nurses were really helpful. Uh, I just said to them, look, I don't like needles. They were really, uh, really good with me. And uh I didn't feel a thing, to be honest. It was probably the easiest injection that I've ever, ever had. So even even though I was really apprehensive, it was, um, yeah, as, as I said, one of the easiest things I've ever I've ever done. I think like at the very beginning, when the jab like first came out, I thought like, oh, I don't know, like that's it's quite new. But then as kind of like, you know, the ads that were coming out that were like, it's gone through the same test as every other jab. And, you know, obviously the news was pushing that. I was like, well, it's gone through the same as all the other jabs. And like everybody's getting it, then it must be fine. So like, because I don't know anything about medicine. So if they say it's fine, then it must be fine. And that was kind of my thought. <laughs> that was the sort of thing before it all properly started. I thought mm -hmm. it it's maybe a bit quick, but they're really quick to reassure you that there's, you know, it's, it's just fast tracked because everyone was on it as soon as possible. And I really thought that we wouldn't be getting a chance at it until almost the end of the year. So I was kind of jumping at the chance to get the vaccine so that I could start traveling again, and things like that, without fear of kind of affecting anyone else that we're going to travel to. Yeah, for me, I think it was, you know, I would have got it anyway. Um, I was, I'm happy with vaccines in general. But um, the, for me, the evidence is just, you know, piling up in terms of why we have to get it, you know. And you look at the different mutations around the world, and that's really, you know, you know, nine times out of ten, as young folk, we're going to be fine. However, every time it mutates, it does something different. And the only way to stop that is to get as many people vaccinated as possible and stop the mutations happening and get control of it. And, you know, I mean, we've we've tried a few different things and different countries have tried different things. Every country is different, you know. Um, and, yeah, for me, it just became pretty obvious that the vaccine is the only way out. Um, I'm quite an outgoing person. I used to love going to music gigs festivals different things traveling a lot as well and you know the sooner we can get back to that the better for me yep it was really really well organized obviously with with my work at the newspaper i cover um the vaccinations quite uh, quite a lot and yeah numbers are, are unbelievable uh, the vaccination teams have been really really good and not only in the amount of people they're they're getting through as well but as I said my own personal experience the way they they sort of uh, they help you as well when you're there and um, they're very reassuring. Yeah, I, I think on that front as well you know I think in that organising in that um, reliable is important because there's a small minority of people that are really hesitant and perhaps you know they're looking for any excuse not to perhaps mm -hmm. get it um, and there's been you know failings at government levels in terms of the track and trace system which we still isn't as good as it could be um, compared to other countries. Um, so it was vital that this part of everything, i.e. the vaccine program, had been done so well and just, you know, impressive, really. Um, and, and I think that's reassuring in itself. I think you just have to watch the, the reports of the doctors in that second wave, but they, that second wave, they were, you know, the, the system was almost broken because of, because of the pressure it was under, you know. And, um, you know, we can't afford to get in that situation again, so... That's one of the reasons it was important for me anyway to get the vaccine because at the end of the day it's not just about the NHS dealing with um, the, 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 the virus it's the hospital appointments are getting put back and the medical treatments are missed because they're having to deal with COVID at this moment in time so yeah, that's that's important I think Just a sore arm that was it, it just um, my arm was sore for, for 24 hours and then um, me and Alan got our job on the same day and then uh, 
we saw saw off the pain with a couple of pints. That was pretty much it. <laughs> <laughs> I just sleep, just slept on the other arm. That was the only sort of effect that uh, that it had. Although I did get my jab in my right arm, which Alan informed me is not very uh, very clever. I think because I was just so like just get it over with that I got it in the in the right arm. So um, yeah, probably advice to people: get it in your in the arm that you don't sleep on and that you don't write with. Um, I had a sore arm. I was quite tired the next day. But I'm not sure if that was just like uni revision or my job. <laughs> so I'm not sure I'm like the best person. I actually, uh, I felt more awake, but I think that might have been mentally thinking, I'm going to be tired. I've got things to do. Let's just keep on going. So it, even if I was tired, it wasn't, wasn't over and above anything that I would have had before. <laughs> I actually said to my sister on the morning, I said, if I didn't have to, you know, if this was just affecting me, I would be like, I, I might not even take the, the jab, but it's not just you. It's, it's, it's everybody else. And it's your grandparents, it's your parents, it's people who are, are vulnerable. You know, you, you've got to really, um, you know, think about more than, than just yourself and do it for, for everybody else, do it for the, the community. Um, yeah, I find that the, the the travel aspect, the getting everything open, is uh, it's great for ourselves, but it's also the idea that we'll get the economy back going, we'll get people back into jobs, we'll, you know, uh, keep keep everything uh, keep everything open for as long as possible. Yeah, and I've just been finishing uni, so like, it's not it's not been great because Claire's the same that we've kind of lost our last year. Yeah. So I don't really want other people to then be in the same boat as us. Like, it's a bit of a bummer to do four or five years of work and then you get to the end of it and you're like oh great I'm doing an online graduation like this is fun yeah. you know you're finishing an exam at two in the morning like in the spare room it's it's not the same 